Obviously, this is a really big subdural hematoma. Has no respect for the skull sutures, just crosses straight over. Has this crescentic kind of appearance to it. Compare that to the extra dural that we just saw, the really big one that really pushed in, and the mass effect is actually the same. People tend to underestimate the volume of subdural hematoma because it goes right along the whole of the convexity. There's a whole lot of blood there, a whole lot of mass effect. Doesn't look as dramatic as the extra dural, so beware of subdural hematomas of underestimating their mass effect. You want to measure that midline shift, get the, the anterior folks, posterior folks, and then measure out from that midline where the midline should be, out to the septum pellucidum to get a measurement of that. As Alex said, um, the temporal horn is pushed right into here somewhere. This is temporal horn. So there's going to be a whole lot of uncus sitting in here. There's none of that CSF sitting around the midbrain again. We can't see Mickey Mouse. So we've got uncle herniation. The subdural space is continuous with the dural reflections, unlike the extra dural, which is going to stop and not go through a dural reflection. Um, the subdural is going to continue along. So look at the thickness and hyperdensity of that fox. Remember earlier we saw really, really thin? This one's thickened. So the subdural continues over the fox and it continues over the left tentorial leaflet. Look at that. See that thickening? So that's a good one. Often you have isolated hemorrhage just on the fox or just on the tentorium. So you want to look, concentrate on those slices there. That hyperdensity is moving away off to the left or off to the right. That's tentorial subdural hematoma. Another round of phacal fracture. This is in the cervical spine. So what do you think? Is this a fake fracture or is this a real fracture? Again, arrows there to help you. How are the voting? Are you coming through? Let's have a look. Okay, so the answer is fake. And 58% were right for the black and blue compared to 58.1. Three counts. Three counts. Unbelievable. 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 Okay, so this is fake. It looks really like a fracture, doesn't it? So, but if you have a look, it's on one slice, and then as you move down, the vertebral body goes back to looking normal again. Remember, um, Craig earlier spoke about that bazy vertebral vein in the lumbar spine. You get that in the cervical spine as well, and it often continues as these venous channels heading off through the vertebral body. Okay, and if you catch them on an axial slice like that, it can really look like a burst fracture, you know, the burst fracture or the, or the flexion fracture we saw earlier. 